everyone. Thanks for being with us today. So one of the things that's super important to me is faith. And it's also a core value of the college. And it's also one of wonderful things that people hold dear and close and dear to their hearts. Um, I started Grace Upon Grace out of my own faith connection to faith and dance connection. Um, so one of the things that's happening right now in our society is that people are having a hard time engaging in church worship services. People, young families are, it's just really hard for them. They find it inaccessible. They didn't grow up and they're finding new ways to re-engage with the worshiping service. Um, and movement goes beyond words. That's something that when people are hung up on words, movement can be something that speaks deep to their soul that they might not be aware of. Um, Grace Upon Grace um, has performances and workshops as ways to engage families um, for their kids to embody the gospel. I think that when you're really participating in a service, it means a lot more. So here's a short video to show us, to show you what we do. So what began here at Gustavus in the dance studio um, has been growing and we've made connections through the Board of Trustees. There are many pastors on the Board of Trustees that we've been in communication with. Um, and then Gustavus has their association of congregations that we, there's many churches there that we've reached out to who have interest. Uh, church in Owatonna we have a meeting with in June and a church in Minneapolis we also have a meeting with in June. And many other con congregations are just not quite thinking about fall yet. So. Um, we are, all, like I said, we're in conversations with churches in the Twin Cities, so we're moving into the Twin Cities network and expanding. There are 676 ELCA churches in the Twin Cities. Um, and then moving in and looking at synods and saying, how can we go to a synod assembly and contact a whole group of churches that way? So that's where we're at. Um, and Sacred Dance defines denominational borders. So we're looking at talking to our brothers and sisters in ministry at many different denominational um, borders that way. So Sacred Dance and Grace Upon Grace is all founded on human connection to each other and to their faith. Uh, so we're relying on technology just very subtly, just as a means of communication um, and getting the word out there. But instead of spending a lot of time online, we are spending most of our time with our students and with each other and with congregations. So there's a little bit of competition. Um, so we are a sacred dance company. We're the only ones in the Midwest um, and in the whole kind of country. Um, however, there are schools that offer sacred dance classes amongst their jazz classes or ballet classes, but that means sacred dance is contained to the dance studio and to their spring recitals. Um, we are a mobile company. We can go out into the world. We can reach a whole variety of people. Um, and so that's something unique about us. 
So before I started Grace Upon Grace, I had eight years to kind of get a feel for the market and say, how can I use performances and workshops to go out into the world? I've always been well received, maintaining those connections and now having a whole company to go to those churches is kind of an amazing gift to have. Um, and so I said, we have performances and workshops. So going out in the congregation and performing, but also teaching their kids and having them embody the gospel in their own church. I'm not alone in this adventure. I have a group of wonderful women who have stood by me in the creative process, but also been in the business planning and being ways to market and reach out to families. Um, I know full well that they, being a member of the company means that you know the gospel and you know the great joys and excellence that Sacred Dance can bring into the world. Um, and I'm looking forward for the ways for them to go out into the world and share Sacred Dance that way. So with the performances and workshops, this is what we've kind of, uh, projected with our finances so far. Um, as of right now, I'm still here at Gustavus graduating this year, um, and so, my, so are my dance company members. But this is kind of a weekend project that as we build connections with congregations, we can um, expand our network that way. However, we're in the process of developing a sacred dance curriculum kit, so ways that we can send it out into the world with a box that has videos in it so that they can learn the steps on their own, uh, liturgical props to dance with, uh, Bible studies and journal questions that all correspond with the curriculum, um, making it for Advent and Easter and Christmas. So it's a seasonal thing that can expand that way. As you can see, it dramatically changes the way our projections are. Um, so that's something that we're in the process of developing and seeing the ways that it can best fit congregational life. We are not, the, we've started here in Gustavus, and so we have reached out into the world and we've performed here at Gustavus with the kids, um, that's from the pictures. We've also gone to Mankato and performed at Christ the King and looking forward to continuing our ministry with them, as well as Diamond Lake Lutheran. It's been a great experience there as well. So forming this company has been like the best part of my whole Gustavus experience. It's combined my two majors, dance and religion. It's combined my passions of dance and faith. Um, and no matter where I go, this will continue to grow with me. It's always been something that's been dear and near to my heart. Um, right now, Maddie's gonna hand out some brochures so that you can see what we will be handing out to the churches. Uh, this is kind of a mock-up, so bear with us. Um, so thank you so much for your time and hearing my story and my aspirations of taking this out into the world. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, business model? Who, who pays and how does that work? Um, so right now we're in the conversation with some churches that the churches are paying us directly. Um, when there is a need, there's often a donor who can come out of the work and help us financially support the company, especially with churches who are struggling to try to get kids involved, that when you have an event like this, it kind of pulls people that you may or may not know. It's engaging families that way. So there's often money in churches that when people have a good cause, they will put their money that way. From the marketing perspective, have you approached like a partner potentially, like an ELCA that can spread the word to more churches versus just you yourself doing it? Yeah, so I am in conversation. I have a meeting in June with uh, the, I'm from Pepin, Wisconsin, so we're in the Northwest Senate of the Wisconsin ELCA, uh, talking with her and saying, how can we be at Senate assemblies and having a booth and being the person with all of those congregations all in one place at one time, so yeah. <coughs> Uh, with the kit, um, digital, the videos and things like that, do you have an estimate on how much it would take you, your company, to build that out? Yeah, so we've gone online and kind of looked at the financial projections for how much all of those individual pieces will be. Um, there's a little bit of labor, there's some fabric for Easter, and so all the hemming and that kind of things. Um, I do not know that number on the top of my head right now. I think it's $500 is for that kit, um, but that has four for, uh, four for Lent, six weeks of Advent, Christmas, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, um, and Easter um, are all in there. That's sort of in the development stage. We're looking at new ways to figure out how we can maybe do a smaller kit for churches who might not have the finances all at once as well. Let's give it all for you.